How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to be going into detail on camshaft adjusters also known as camshaft phasers. So in front of you here you can see a disassembled camshaft adjuster. This one had failed. It was an intake camshaft adjuster on a Mercedes C-Class M271 engine. So in this video I'm going to be going over what actually functions this has in regards to your timing, what benefits it has, also what components make up this camshaft adjuster and how this one actually failed. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, the items that make up uh, this camshaft adjuster. What we have here is the front plate. The front plate has a torsion spring inbuilt in it and that is the inside of the front plate, also known as the front cover. This here is the timing chain sprocket, complete with the outer housing for the vane. So this is what your timing chain sits on, and the outer cover sits just like that. This unit here is the vane, which sits in just like that and moves forward and back in that position. These items right here are the chamber seals, they sit on each one of the outer parts of the vane and this little unit right here is the lock pin complete with the spring and that slides in there and goes down like that If you look in here, you have oil galleries where oil pressure comes out, which I'll go into in a little while. This is the backing plate and then these are the four T30 heads that are holding on that backing plate or backing cover. So let's go into a bit more detail on how this actually functions. I'm going to be showing you um, me disassembling it as I'm talking about some of these items, how they work, what they do, uh, and also what item failed on this unit which caused it to need to be replaced. So on this particular engine, it has got two camshaft adjusters. This one is the exhaust. The one I had disassembled in front of me was the intake one. And its function is for the variable valve timing of the vehicle. Variable valve timing means it can have a more efficient engine through its power range. And what that means is it can increase the low speed torque and also the high speed performance. Now, more importantly, from a manufacturer's standpoint, that means it can decrease harmful emissions at the same time. So it's got benefits in regards to its performance, but it's also got very significant benefits to harmful emissions and reducing the likes of those NOx emissions. So that's why these came out. Now, one thing of note with these is to not get them confused with regards to what they can do. These do not change the camshaft lift or the valve duration on an engine. They do not alter that in any way. They just function on the timing. So where you have other variable valve timing situations, they work on a um, camshaft lobe where you can operate a different lift and a duration. These don't. These alter the timing and that can allow for some valve overlap. So these are controlled by the ECU. 
Uh, on the outer side of this, you're going to have a spool valve or an oil pressure control valve that sits on the outer part. And that is the T100 head and that needs to be removed on these. And on the outer part of that, you're going to have the cover, which has a magnetic solenoid, which uh, which controls it. Now, that solenoid control electronically um, is by the ECU, which can command it to be pressed in and out whenever is required. That gives direct and very, very accurate timing in regards to the exhaust and the intake however the ECU requires depending on speed, engine load, etc. So how this unit actually functions is based on oil pressure. Like I said earlier, that spool valve that sits in there directs oil how it wants into these passages. So if I was to slide this back up, take all of those out, you can see that there is different oil ports all the way along and that is very significant in how this functions because you can have oil pressure here advance it and then oil pressure on the other side which will retard the timing now if you go onto the back side of it here now this is the camshaft this is where the camshaft lobe sits and if you just look along here this lock pin has an oil entryway as well. So the lock pin sits into the central position like that. We have our spring, which sits in there like that. And that usually will be in a locked position. When the oil pressure uh, builds up, it's capable of releasing that, lifting it off, pushing it against the spring so that goes into the unlocked position and it's able to rock back and over. The failure of this item was caused by wear on the top of this locking pin in conjunction with the plate. So there's wear on the plate this is too worn. It's got an elongated hole and also on the opposite edge, the uh, side folds in. So you have wear on two parts of the plate and you also have wear like, it's like a countersunk or a chamfered edge on the locking pin, which basically a rounded edge which creates it to easily slide out of the locking position. So that torsion spring which sits in there and that locks on the front plate like so. If we were to flip it back here again, from the back side, you can get a good look. This is the camshaft uh, adjustment there. I'm gonna put in these seals.
and then you have the backing plate. I have an, a little mark on either side as to where it should sit. And that would sit down like that. You would put thin bolts through there. If you were to flip that, let's leave thin bolts in position. So I hope that gives you a very clear uh, understanding of how this actually functions. Uh, giving you this imagery and all that, I, it definitely helps me when I, when I need to understand how something works, breaking it down and getting a, a visual on the inside makeup uh, can make something um, a lot more clearer. So if you imagine this camshaft is in the locked position here, so the camshaft is locked to that, but you have movement of the timing in relation to the chain. The camshaft stays the same, and then the timing is altered just like that. A very simple, let's say, design in its makeup, but it's obviously controlled by um, the ECU, and it has that uh, level of intricacy that it can command at any time it wants, based on a lot of different information that is in, being input to the ECU. And that is pretty much it for this video, guys. I really hope you found this one useful and informative. I tried to pack as much information as I could into it, how this functions, the benefits that it has, the intricacies and the components that make up this actual adjuster, and of course, how this item failed. Now, this is the second video on this Mercedes on um, on a playlist. I'm gonna be making three, four, or maybe even five videos in total on this, depending on how long the next one is. But in the next one, if you're interested in it, it will be how you set up the timing, how you delink that chain and relink that chain using those tools that are required. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed if you haven't, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.